So basically in this very special tutorial, we're gonna go from the basics of Cinema 4D all the way to uh, some more advanced techniques. So we're basically gonna start with um, just some simple animation techniques, uh, learn about keyframing and uh, parenting, and creating hierarchies between objects. And then we're gonna take a look at MoGraph and we're gonna uh, use the cloner object to duplicate our uh, work. And we're going to take a quick look at effectors and we're going to learn how to trigger animation using effectors, which is a more advanced technique, but it's pretty simple. But um, okay, so we're just going to get started. So basically we're going to create a folding box animation. So I'm going to start by creating a plane from up here. And I'm going to make the width and height segments just one. So it's basically a polygon square. And I'm just going to reduce this a bit. I'm just going to make it uh, 200 maybe. And I'm going to make this editable by clicking this icon here. So if we go into vertex mode, we have this very simple uh, polygon face. So what I want to do is I want to move this um, anchor point. So we're going to learn about snapping. I'm just going to go into this snap option, choose enable snap. And then I'm going to choose edge snap. Now I'm going to go into move anchor mode, so I'm just going to click here. So if I just push this back, it should snap right to the center there. I'm just going to exit anchor mode and I'm going to exit snapping. So if I just click on the plane and go to coordinates, if I rotate around pitch, we get this kind of um, flapping effect, which we're going to use. So I'm just going to uh, undo that. I'm going to call this uh, bottom because it's the bottom of the box and I'm going to now control hold down control and drag this so that creates a copy I'm going to call this uh, far face and and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to push it to the back so if we want this to snap we could use snapping and there we go, the face snaps to the bottom face. So this is the far face, and we can basically, you can imagine how the box is gonna animate now. So we need a few more faces. So I'm just gonna duplicate that again, hit R, hold down Shift, and it rotates 90 degrees in 90 degree, sorry, 10 degree increments. I'm just gonna hit E to move this, and I'm gonna try and snap it to the back. now. If you want to double check, so I'm just going to call this uh, left face. If you want to double check the coordinates, you can uh, go to here, the coordinates, and as you can see, Z is 2.8 something. That should be zero, and that's going to be perfectly uh, aligned. I'm just going to check the rest. Yep, zero, zero, 100, and minus 100. Because the cube uh, dimensions were, the polygon face dimensions were 200, Basically, 100 will be uh, kind of the snapping point. Okay, left face. So I'm just going to duplicate this again. Control drag. I'm going to call this right face. And I'm just going to move this here. And as you can see, the coordinates look good. Duplicate it again. Hit R to rotate. Hold down Shift and it snaps to 10 degree increments. E to move. And I'm just going to put that here. And now I'm going to check. See, that should be zero. And that's now perfectly aligned. Call this front face because it's kind of facing the camera. It's the front most face. That's the furthest face. What we need lastly is um, a face that attaches to this far face, another flap on basically the top flap. So I'm just going to duplicate this far face and I'm just going to move it up that should snap perfectly yep 200 100 those seem like exact values so everything's lined up nice and uh, perfectly now what I want to do is we'll call this top flap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make top flap a child of far face so if I rotate far face that top flap moves with it which is good and we can then uh, move that top flap separately and they're all kind of linked together like this so I'm just gonna undo everything 
Okay, so I'm gonna start by I'm gonna start animating this. So left face. Uh, I'm just gonna just do it uh, using R. Hold down Shift and just open up these flaps, ninety degrees. Whoops, didn't snap the shift there. Shift, yep, ninety degrees. And this one, hold down Shift, ninety degrees. Okay, so we now got this opened up box, which is good. And we're gonna animate this folding up. So usually I start my animations at about frame ten. And we don't re really need a keyframe for bottom because that's just going to be staying where it is. Uh, the far face I'm going to animate last. That's the top flap. So I might start with this uh, one here. And we're basically going to animate P. So I'm just going to click here, creates a keyframe. And I'm going to make this maybe 30 frames. I'm going to move it to 90. Keyframe here. So we have this animation. Okay, so 10 to 40 is that range. Now next I think I'll animate um, maybe the front face. So I'm gonna start at 15 for this one. Uh, keyframe on P and then go to maybe 45. Put in 90 there. So we have this cool animation. And then on frame 20, I'm gonna animate this one. So keyframe on P, go to frame 50 and 90 degrees, that's perfectly lined up, keyframe here. So we have this kind of delay, each face one at a time kind of animates. And frame 25, I'm gonna grab this parented uh, object. So we're gonna animate P here, frame, just put a, click the keyframe, 25, go to 55, make this 90 degrees, keyframe here. And we have that face animating as well. Pretty cool animation. And lastly, at about frame 50, I want to animate this top flap. So I'm just going to put a value for this top one keyframe here. And then the top closes. So we created a pretty cool uh, basic box animation. We could even move this back to 40. So it's kind of bending as it's coming up. Just play with the ranges, maybe just re make that 40 to 60, that top flap. Okay, I'm just gonna play this back. Yeah, great. So next I'm just gonna create a null and I'm just gonna put everything into that null. So basically everything's uh, grouped inside of that null and just call this box. So what we can do now is we can actually uh, use MoGraph to create clones. So I'm just going to go to MoGraph, create a cloner, put the box in there, go to cloner, object, uh, object mode, sorry, grid array. The Y count, which is in the middle, I'm just going to make that one. And I'm just going to make the count maybe six by six initially, just going to zoom out and I think 1200 should create enough space in between the clones. If we play this back, we have that box animation, but everything's very uniform and kind of mathematical. It doesn't look very good, to be honest. Might increase these clone counts to eight. Depends on how much your machine can handle, basically. And I'm gonna make the spacing 2,200. Okay. So right now, if we just play this animation back, everything plays at the same speed. Now, so we can basically apply effectors to cloners. So I'm just gonna to go to cloner and create a plane effector. Uncheck position, choose scale, uniform scale, and make this minus one just to demonstrate what it does. Uh, in fall off, I'm gonna choose linear and I'm just gonna move this. So basically this is what the effector does. This effector, plane effectors, set to scale the objects down. Minus one basically makes them scale down to nothing. So when this red area in the middle, this is kind of like a fall off. When this area touches the cloner objects, uh, the effect takes place. It's pretty simple. This is a linear one, so it's basically a, like an infinite plane. So everything uh, shrinks down. If I chose a spherical one, it would 
only affect the ones within that spherical area. So as you can see, we get this kind of cool effect where the middle ones are shrinking down and then coming back up because the spheres uh, got a limited size. Anyway, I'm going to go back to linear. I don't want to complicate this too much. And that's looking good. I think the size scale I set, I'll set to 400. Fall off, make that 100. So it's kind of a bit smoother, as you can see. So usually the way effectors are used is uh, the plane effector. You can, instead of scale, you could do position. So we could um, make them jump up 100 units like that along Y. So you could use that, use it to do that, or you could make them rotate. We could choose some kind of rotation, 90 degrees here. As soon as it touches the cloners, they start rotating. That's another cool effect. That's the basics of it. And then you've got a random effector, which kind of randomizes their positions using a seed kind of algorithm. But what we want to do in this instance is we want to trigger the animation with this plane effector. So right now, if we play this back, the animation plays regardless of where this effector is. I could put it over here and it's just not going to care. It's just going to uh, animate regardless. To fix that problem, um, we're going to go to cloner transform and where it says animation mode play we're going to make this fixed what this does is it basically basically makes the cloners wait for the effector before playing the animation on the plane effector here instead of using like position scale rotation i'm actually going to use time offset and we check the animation before if you just highlight everything it's 60 frames so here on the time offset i'm just going to put in 60 now I'm going to play this animation back. Nothing happens. That's because the cloners are waiting for this effector. And instead of plane, sorry, instead of plane, I'm going to call this time trigger. And I'm going to animate this. So starting from frame 10, um, let's go to coordinates. I'm just going to animate this. Z, just put a keyframe here, go to frame 110. And it goes all the way over there. If we just play this back now, Oh, the cloners are reacting. They're playing the animation when the effector uh, touches them. Now, right now, that this looks kind of a bit messy. Like, it's kind of a bit quick. It's almost a bit fast. So, we can always increase the animation range to about 200. And move this keyframe from 110 to about 190. Just so the animation is a bit more gradual. To me, that's still a bit fast. The problem is, um, if we just right click here, animation, show F curve, we're basically you've got an easing kind of curve. I'm just gonna grab this curve, just select both points, just click here and make it linear. That way we haven't got this kind of uh, easing the animations. Yeah, that's much better. So that's great. We're just gonna add a few more things to this. So cloner, MoGraph effector. Now we're going to add a delay effector. Now what the, this is quite a cool effector. It basically just kind of um, gives the animation a bit of bounce, a bit of delay. So I'm going to set it to spring and I'm just going to see what happens. And it hasn't really had an effect. Um, I'm just going to... This usually applies to position scale transformation. So it's not actually going to have any effect um, on the animation. But what we can do is, on the time trigger, we can also add some scale. Um, so basically, they kind of scale up. I'm just going to turn this delay off for now. And the fall off, we want it the other way around, I think. So the box is Okay, wait, this is a mess. I'm just going to take off the scale parameter. Invert the fall off, makes it just go the other way. We need a separate effector if we want to do scale. So I'm just going to go to cloner, MoGraph effector, just do another effector, make this one scale. And um, what we can do is, we want the scale to move at the exact same uh, time as the time trigger. What you can do is you can go to coordinates for the time. We already animated this. So I'm just going to right click here, animation, 
copy track. Go to the scale uh, effector, and we just need to set the fall off on it. And go to coordinate, and then just paste animation, paste track. So that's the scale and time trigger are gonna have the exact same animation, which is kind of what we want. On the scale effector, I'm gonna set scale as before, uniform scale to minus one. And now we should have everything scaling down. So we don't want that, we wanna flip it. So fall off, invert. And now everything's kind of scaling up. And then the animation's playing as well. So go to the cloner effectors and what we want is the time trigger first, then the scale and then the delay. The uh, effectors execute top to bottom. So I'm just going to activate this delay again and it should have an effect because we have a scale effector in there. I'm just going to turn off position and rotation. Spring 71%. Let's see what happens. Is it going to be springy? Yeah, it kind of is. Yep, we've got that springy effect. It's a bit strange, but uh, let's just keep it for now. Uh, we can use blend as well. I think that's maybe just kind of smooths it out a bit. Yeah, I think spring's a bit cooler though. That's pretty cool. Let's just um, so let's just carry on. Cloner. I'm gonna now add a random effector. And I'm going to put the position of this, maybe even before the time trigger, because I'm going to use this to kind of scatter the positions of these. It's too uniform right now. So we'll call this one random pause. And I'm just going to go to parameter, position. I don't want the Y position changing. I want them all fixed on the floor. But you can change the X and Z position. By the way, you might want to turn off delay because it's going to interfere uh, it's going to try and calculate while you're adjusting the positions. We don't want that. Um, let's just scatter them out a bit. Now we have a small problem when we do this. The effector animation is going to change. The effector is kind of outside of the range now. We could incre increase the clones as well, so we can maybe go to 12 now. We have all these boxes, and we just want to scatter them out a bit. Just scattering them out. You can always go through different seeds. Now we have some intersection, but I'm just going to ignore, ignore that for now. Our right, time trigger, I'm just going to go to the frame 10 and just push this back a bit. Keyframe it, go to frame 190 and just make sure it's outside the range. And then we can just animation copy track and put it on the scale as well, remember, because we want that to move at the same speed. So now we have this. Computer's a bit slow now, but we have these boxes kind of appearing and folding. Uh, on scale, I'm just going to increase the size of that scale, make the fall off 100. Uh, I'm going to turn these off in the viewport, not here, sorry. Just make them invisible in the viewport. So this, this red traffic light here. I'll turn delay back on, so I'm just going to see what the animation looks like with the delay added. It's playing back really slow, but yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Boxes just appearing and folding. Okay. So that's basically the end of this uh, tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something. Please stay tuned for uh, more videos and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And thanks for watching.